Good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated Economist here. So I had a request to talk about semiconductors. And to be honest with you, I really don't know a whole lot about semiconductors. I'm not a techie kind of guy. I couldn't tell you the ins and outs of what these things are actually doing. When the demand form goes way up and what semiconductors are the important ones as opposed to the ones that are like, you know, just everyday products that are not a big deal. I mean, I can't tell you all about these semiconductors and the ins and outs of them. I really can't. However, I have been following the issues, what's going on as far as the production of these semiconductors and the companies that are the producers of the equipment that make these semiconductors, along with the companies that make semiconductors. So there's a lot that's going into this. Now, the first article that I'm going to leave down in the description is from back in December of 2020. Yeah. And this article is talking about a Chinese corporation that is defaulting on their bonds and they are a producer of these semiconductors. And if I remember right from the article, I think they were like the largest producer in China for these, for these semiconductors. So even like eight months ago, there was corporations that produced these things that were having major issues taking place with their debt. And it continued on with China as far as the availability of getting new machinery. I'll leave a link down in the description for this article as well. They had tried to purchase these semiconductor making machines. I don't know what to call them, but anyway, they tried to purchase these, purchasing these things from the Netherlands. And they found that the Biden administration was going to carry on with the Trump's tariffs and saying, you know, no, you guys can't get these things because of, I don't know, national security reasons or whatever it is that they use. But China, who was trying to produce more of them, was actually being denied by the United States from getting the machinery they needed out of the Netherlands. I thought that was quite quite an interesting story. And I'm going to leave a bunch of links down there. I have probably, I don't know, I, I won't leave all of them because I have probably have 20 or 30 links down there for, for all these different uh, issues that were taking place as far as um, the semiconductors go. But I, I don't know. I don't. I'll probably leave like six. Okay. I won't leave them all down there because that would be crazy. Um, one of the other issues, cost of production. So this is, this is what I, I mean, it doesn't really have to do with the production of it uh, as far as like what's coming into the availability. What the counterfeit chips I think about is like when a comp when if you were a producer of a good that you need these semiconductors, right? You know, whatever little component that it is that you're building. And you get counterfeit chips in, right? Not only do you have the loss of revenue from spending it on those chips, because you now have to take your, you know, take money to another company and order these chips again. So not only do you lose the money on the product itself, but then you have to basically double that by buying it again from a legitimate company. But then also the cost goes up again because now you're leery of whether or not you're going to get, you know, chips that are even, you know, capable of doing the things that you need them to do. So now your security measures go up and now you're, that's added cost to it. So not only are the companies that are getting hit with counterfeit chips, these, zips, you know, these counterfeit semiconductors, shoddy made or whatever, not only are they some of these guys getting hit, but now the other companies who may have not purchased counterfeit chips are beefing up their security in order to make sure that they are not getting counterfeit chips as well. Does that kind of make sense? So you can see how like the added costs are going into these semiconductors before they even get the semiconductors just by making sure that they are legitimately going to be functional chips. Anyway, thought that was an interesting story. So I'm going to leave that one as far as a link down in the description. Now, what I found interesting is coming from the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. They, uh, they abbreviated uh, TSMC for short. Now, this statement that I'm about ready to tell you is really what it's all about. This is the reason why the semiconductors are going to get very expensive. Now, listen to this. Or have been getting expensive. That's probably what I should say. The price has a... The price, they're talking about the price increasing. The price has a two-fold purpose for the TSMC as it addresses the shortages. In the short term, higher prices push down demand and preserve supply for customers who have no other choice. 
Over the long term, the higher income will help TSMC invest aggressively in new capacity. So that's a very interesting thing to think about is that it has a twofold purpose. One is that if you drive the prices up, only the people who are in absolute desperation have no other choice will buy those semiconductors, leaving them the availability of it. Now, if you have the prices lower, which they could probably do, but they're going to elevate them beyond what they should so that they can create this environment for the people who have no other choice. Very much like the plywood issue that was taking place inside of the construction industry. When plywood was hitting $80 a sheet, people said, who would buy this stuff? Stop buying it. There is contractors out there who had no other choice. They have to continue on with this project. If they cannot find the plywood, they will pay any price to get it. Very much like the semiconductor situation. So if they elevate the price of the semiconductors beyond what it is that they probably should, then they will create a, an amount of inventory for the absolute desperate people. Does that kind of make sense? And then on top of that, all that extra profit will go into producing even more semiconductors. Now that is where the big item is going to be as far as what's going into the semiconductors. The added capacity. Soon, the demand will be met. Like there was a time when there was companies out there who could produce enough semiconductors to meet the demand. It was a just-in-time demand. But now you got corporations and companies and everybody else out there who is short of these chips who are in desperation. They are buying an over amount than what they need. They are panic buying. Very much like what happened in the lumber industry as a lot of lumber yards were panic buying as they could not get the material that they needed for the contractors who were in desperation of those materials. Same thing is happening. These car companies who are in desperation of these semiconductors are willing to pay just about any price to get them and that demand form is causing them to panic buy. They want an oversupply to make sure that this never happens again to have like a cushion supply of these semiconductors. So now the like the orders for these semiconductors is now overwhelmingly high where it went from having a just-in-time delivery to now I want a bunch on hand so that I'm never short again has caused the industry of producers to now go into like mass production of these things or I shouldn't say mass production going into what could be mass production of these things or a massive production they already in mass production but go into massive production is what I should go in characterize that as or describe that as anyway found those to be very interesting articles now i'm going to leave links down in the description talking about all that stuff including the glut of semiconductors that will be coming soon now that has me thinking what's going to happen to the industry once the gluts start kicking in once people say i have enough semiconductors i don't need any more or i'm producing my own or the efficiency of building these semiconductors comes to the point that these companies who have invested all this money and time and effort going into making more chips are losing profit. Whiplash effect. Okay. Let's open some mail, guys. Uh, first one. Oops. This is from... Some with logistics. I think this might have been shipped from... From the mail. I don't think this is actually the person who sent it to me. Let's see here. Oh, is that a steering wheel cover? <laughs> right on. Now I got something else for you guys to laugh at. Oh, can I get it on there? Let's see, <laughs> gotta fix it. Go off, straighten it up there in a minute. Thanks, man. <laughs> right on. Cool. All right, what's this one? Cool, is it fans? 
Double-headed vehicle fans. Cool. Oh, that's nice for when uh, I'm doing videos in here. Uh, low noise. Nice. Yeah, I could turn that on and blow some breeze over me so I don't burn up while I'm doing videos in the car. I like to roll the windows up so we don't get so much noise, but... Thank you so much, guys. This is awesome. Thank you. I didn't get any letters today? Oh, right on, new seat covers. <laughs> Thanks, man, I really appreciate it. Got a new steering wheel cover, I'll put the new seat covers on, I'll set up the fan. Um, man, thank you guys so much. You are so awesome. Um, let's see, what else can I talk about? I guess that's it, uneducated economist. You guys let me know.